Hi guys, Luton here, back with some more Armour 3, and today I'm going to be covering two things, IR grenades and also how to correctly drop bombs with laser guidance systems. Now first of all, the IR grenades. Now you can see we're coming in right here on a target, there's a T100 down here on the ground and there's an IR grenade marking it, but we can't find a lock. I'm coming in right here, I'm trying to find the lock, why can't I get a lock on the IR grenade? The reason is simple, the grenade is on the opposite side of the tank, and unless you actually have a line of sight onto that IR grenade, you will not be able to acquire a lock. So my jet will pan around right now and I will acquire a lock onto that IR grenade. Now basically once you have a lock, you then need to proceed to the correct altitude in order to drop the bomb. Now there's a couple of different ways people like to do this. Now I actually spent a lot of time experimenting trying to acquire the correct style of lock and it was very interesting actually how we did this because a lot of the time trying to find the correct altitude and so on is very difficult for people I know a lot of people often say they're coming in low they get a you know they find the, the laser designation but then they can't actually find how to drop the bomb now you can see right here we're cruising up at about 800 meters and the target is designated all I do is just fly in a straight line there comes the lock and I pull away I'm nice and safe up in the high, I'm going at good speed, and you'll see that the bomb will come in and drop right here on the target any moment now. It takes a little bit of time to descend, obviously, from the release. And coming in on the target, there we go, and that was against an IR grenade target. Now we're going to have some standard uh, laser designation as well. Now I wanted to try this out because I had been very frustrated not being able to actually understand how you could drop these GBU bombs from high altitude onto laser designated targets. And I think the reason is a lot of the time people expect that once the actual, there we are, laser designation target is acquired, all right? A lot of the time people expect that once you've got the acquisition, you can then just, you know, the star should immediately acquire for the bomb release. What the targeting computer actually has to do is it has to understand your speed, altitude, and therefore at what is the correct time in order to actually release that target. Okay, so here we are, I've leveled off, I've gained a little bit of height, back up to about 800, 900 meters, line up with the target, and here we are, we see when it come in about 1k, and there is the target ready to go. Fire the bomb away, and then you can see as I move closer, I actually lose that star and that's because you know we are no longer at the correct angle according to my altitude that's going to enable that bomb to hit and there we are hit the target bang on again so being a good distance away if you want to do high altitude bombing is actually really important because you need to have the correct angle of descent for the bomb to drop onto that laser designated target okay so once you actually have pressed your next target on the keyboard okay you found your laser designation you just hit the target and then it stays lit okay providing your guy on the ground is keeping the target lit you will keep that acquisition we're just taking off here i thought it'd be cool because it's nice little uh, night time remember this was kind of like twilight night so it was really nice the uh, cockpit showed up really well and so basically again you can do this kind of with the night or the day once you have your laser acquisition all right all you need to do is just pan back around keep a decent height you can stay up at like 800 meters a thousand meters 1200 meters you can stay really high now just demoing here a lower altitude bomb run coming in at about 350 400 meters here we are we actually acquire the target at about 1.3 1.4 kilometers and then i just simply fire the target away now that's a lower altitude bomb run there's often a little bit more dangerous uh, ground forces trying to take you down etc etc going for that high altitude run can be the way to go and the the easiest way with the high altitude it does often lock but also if you do like a fast run just to acquire the target pull up gain some nice altitude and then you're good to go with the uh, high drop bomb run obviously we're just panning back around here there we are I see the target got the target now I'm still pulling up I've got some good height on me right here some good height and then we are look see bombs lit away as I panned around there I was able to get that bomb away all right because again if I if I got any closer it would be too close for that bomb to accurately drop and the targeting computer wouldn't allow it and I just wait for the bomb to hit bam straight on so again it's really that simple and I hope that really helps because I think some people don't really understand or it's a little bit confusing about how to actually accurately drop those GBU-12 bombs onto the laser designated targets. Now again look this is something else that people have been speculating about we actually heard something with the IR flares. These are IR flares from the grenade launcher and look you cannot lock these. I'm trying to find a target here, trying to find a target. I cannot find a target on the flares. So IR flares do not work for targeting. It is only the IR grenades which will work for laser targeting. 
Okay, and the last thing to talk about here is the secondary use for the IR grenades, and uh, we also see again the IR flares coming in here. Unfortunately, you can see them very clearly uh, to the naked eye, so not really that useful. However, the IR grenades are still invisible. You can't see them at all, you can't see them on the ground, but when you bring up the night vision, you can see just below out the corner there, the, r the window, four little dots flashing. We'll pan back around and we'll get some view on those. So basically, why would you use the IR grenades at night time for uh, you know, designating a helicopter landing pad coming in? Well, for one reason, uh, the IR grenades are actually visible up to a distance of one kilometer. Chem lights are not really. Chem lights, you often as a pilot will only see chem lights when you come into a range about 200 meters. Uh, you often don't really see the chem lights very easily at all. It often may be a sort of vague coloration, but you really don't see it very well. Whereas the IR grenades, look, you can see them right here. Now, at this kind of, you know, sort of looking out here, they don't look that clear, but they're clear enough to a pilot. And I say, I have seen and used the IR grenades in-game, and they actually work very, very well as a transport pilot. Coming in on the ground, you can see the IR grenades marked. So if you want pickup at night, taking the IR grenades is actually a much better option. Uh, obviously, if you've got jets around, you want to make sure that they don't designate you. Uh, but using the IR grenades to mark a landing zone is a, a very valuable option to you. As uh, you know, and here we are. Let's see. You cannot see them at all. You can only see them with the night vision on. So there we go, guys. That's a very short guide and overview to the IR grenades, laser designation systems for dropping the GBU-12s. And I'm going to have a further video coming up talking specifically about laser designation to try and help some of those guys that, you know, maybe not had a lot of usage with the laser designation. Just going to showcase that very, very simply in a short video. Hope you enjoyed this today, guys. Drop it a like if you did. A lot more Armour 3 content coming up very, very soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.